Lil there, and today I'm going to be telling you how you can get a 9 in GCSE at Excel Maths. In the real exam, I got 73, 74 and 76 out of 80, so I think you can trust my opinion. If you're like my school, we followed the textbook. Ooh. We followed the textbook and there were end of chapter tests. There were like 19 tests. I'm not sure if your school would do it, but our school, we had end of chapter tests out of 50. If you do end of chapter tests, try and get around 80 slash 90 slash maybe even 100% in if you can. That will really keep you on track for a grade 9. Now, if you don't do the end of chapter test for Pearson Ed Excel, whatever test you do at the end of term, keep track of how well you do and what questions you've been getting wrong. I actually have this. It's a book of all of the questions I've got wrong and also it's got all of the topic summaries from the textbook. If you open it up, I have this flashcard which is everything that you need to memorise for the GCSE maths exams. I'll show you here. There's this. And then there's this. That's before I got advanced information, so if you're doing the proper GCSE, that's what you need. We did it in chapters. I have chapter one, and then I have all of the stuff I got wrong. Some of the stuff I didn't get wrong, but like it's stuff that I didn't know how to do easily. I had to figure it out, and like I spent a lot of time figuring it out. So I wrote it down so that I could just know it. And then I had a pink pen, so in pink... I would write what to do, how to do it, and what I got wrong. So for example here, evaluate. I, I put that as my answer probably. And the answer is in that form, in as a whole number. I didn't do that, so I wrote it in pink to remind myself that that's what I need to do. Don't know if that's focus. This is not a camera, this is just a, a phone, so it's not gonna be the best quality. Anyway, yeah, I did that for all the chapters. Here's chapter two. I also put all of the knowledge I needed to know on there. For example, chapter 16, I've got all of the circle theorems on the, in here. Basically, before every test or everything, I would look through this. I know you're not meant to passively read your notes, but you know, for maths, I would look through this, see what questions I got wrong, and then I would sit the test, and then hopefully I would not get the questions I got wrong before wrong in that test. So if I were you, I would get one of these, I don't know what size it is, it's not A4, it's, I don't think it's A5, oh it says here, these are the specs guys. <laughs> you don't have to get this exact one, but squared paper, it's good. So even if I did get questions right, I would write down all the different types of questions that could come up, just in case I forgot or like there was a holiday and I would not remember what to do. That's what you can do in year 10. In year 11, after your, I don't know what mocks you've got, but we had December mocks, we had March mocks. After your March mocks, my school had rolling mocks, that's what they called it. Basically, we sat a paper every single week, whether it was paper one, paper two, paper three. So the whole school had to do a paper every week and the teachers would all mark it. That was quite a lot. But I, th I think it really helped. So if your school does not do rolling mocks, I would every week sit a past paper, go through, check the mark scheme, see what I got wrong. If I can't understand it from the mark scheme, I would go to the teacher and ask them to explain it to me. And any questions you get wrong, put in here. When you're in year 11, you should have finished the syllabus. Yeah, for example, here's chapter 19, which was the last one. Um, I even have some graphs there just to, for full variety to show me how to do some stuff. And then here, non-calculator errors. So I split it into non-calc and calculator because paper one is non-calc and paper two and three are all calculator. So the non-calculator questions you're going to see in the non-calculator exam, you're not really going to have non-calculator questions in the calculator exam because you've got a calculator. So yeah, and then that's when I started doing it in green pen. I changed up my colors, did red pen because these were from my rolling mocks. So if you're gonna do rolling mocks by yourself, I would suggest you do paper one, one week, and then the next week do paper two, then the next week do paper three. So all you can really do for maths is understand how to solve problems and practice, lots of practice. The amount of worksheets we had. Wait, I can sh I can show you. I can show you. After we learnt the content in January, look, we did all of these. Like, if you don't think this is a lot, these are all booklets. So there's like, 
I don't know, like 50 questions in each or 20 questions in each. It's a lot. Practice makes perfect, even though I didn't get full marks. I'm going to show you how I sat the GCSE exam. Here are the timings. How to sit GCSE maths. So each paper is the same, one hour and 30 minutes. Disclaimer, this is what I did. If it doesn't work for you, uh, try something else. Within that hour and 30 minutes, I spent around 45 minutes to one hour answering all questions. Depending how long it takes you to answer all of those questions, you can spend around 30 to 45 minutes double checking your answers. The amount of times I made so many silly mistakes, double checking really saved me. I, sometimes, depending on how difficult the exam was, I was able to finish within half an hour. You want to spend a lot of time double checking. The amount of silly mistakes I made, um, you don't want to be doing that. If you make a silly mistake, as long as you spot it and you fix it before the end of the exam, that's good. So, now I'm going to tell you what I did during study leave. Maths was one of my strongest subjects, so I didn't do a lot of revision for it since we did all of those worksheets already in class. I would say I revised about two days before the exam and I would do four exam papers a day. I would do four past papers a day. I'd do like two in the morning and two in the afternoon, then mark them and see what I got wrong. Generally, I'd only be getting one or two questions wrong in, in those past papers. But yes, past papers are the way to go for maths. If you don't understand how to do questions, you really need to go to your teachers. I'm not a teacher, so I'm not telling you guys how to do the paper. I'm just telling you how I revise for maths. So I hope this helps. It's kind of a shorter video because all you have to do for maths is past paper questions. Thank you. Bye.